It's May 2nd, 2021. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. We've determined a link to episode number 599, part do or redo as it was because for some reason technical difficulties or as i'd like to say testicle difficulties also no one was here to tell me that there was a testicle mm. difficulty uh watching the show last week so but hey we got lloyd in the chat welcome lloyd happy to have you it was rather quiet last week that's okay yeah. it happened except for all your guys yapping I mean, we were. I mean, the show. The show probably was. I don't know. I don't know how to think about it. I didn't get to hear the audio, so I'm curious how it sounded without you. I, I can link you. To the, sound, does it to sound the... like one of our Drag Race episodes where me and Gary, me and Gary, just kind of like kick chat right about, back and forth with each other, or, <laughs> or is there this weird like? There's, there's these uh, long sections of pi- uh, of, of of silence. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I can link you to the VOD. It's still there. Mm-hmm. It's just nobody can see it. <laughs> In any case, let's let's try this again. Uh, what's the sleep schedule? Mm-mm. It seems like this past month, uh, I I just have been like I'll, I'll have days where I'll be on schedule. I have my my I I have uh, on my Apple devices my sleep schedule to be from from one a.m. because I work till midnight from one a.m. to eight a.m. because it's perfect because like on days like this. I need to be up by eight so that I can, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like wake up and everything before we record a show at night. Um, so I have that. But then I've also been addicted to uh, Final Fantasy 14. So I'm, I'm like, it's one o'clock and I'm like, ah, I'm not quite tired. Continue playing <laughs> some more. Or I just, for some reason, just I, I go to bed and I just I do go to bed but just cannot get to sleep mm. and so my sleep schedule has just been all over the place in wonky <sighs> so I don't yeah. know what the, this sleep schedule thing is I and mean, of course my days off I don't have anything set because you know I can do what I want my days I can do off. what I want I do what I want. What I would say is I think it's impractical to expect to go to bed one hour after finishing work. I will say that. Yeah, true. Because I know, I mean, for me personally, I am never that tired when I finished working, no matter what the work was. Ex- well, <laughs> except for the time no. where I was working two full-time jobs, basically. And then like you're just exhausted which is different Mm -hmm. so yeah well well, one of the things is is that i wake up like several hours before so like i have the the normally people have the wake up have an hour or two go to work come home and are up for four five six hours and then go to bed and then etc well i i've set it to be kind of reversed so that my my daily stuff, the time that I take to do during the day, is that also should my schedule flip so that I'm working days, waking up at eight is usually about two hours before I'd actually start work. And then this way I have a consistent schedule between between when I work the day shift and when I work the uh, evening shift. It's just my free time during the day is either in the morning if I work the evening shift or in the evening if I work the day shift. 
Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's the theory behind how I created my sleep schedule. That you don't adhere to. Yeah. Which has been a problem. Damon, it's not our show. Huh? I said it's not our show. Oh. Um... <laughs> I'm assuming this is a DR reference. The, the Drag Race <laughs> soundboard is not available. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can just do that. <laughs> I, I, I guess this, this is another sound that I need to load into my soundboard. I don't know. Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, my life has been pretty much uh, Final Fantasy fourteen procrastinating on uh, getting stuff ready for my uh, D&D players and, and not having a, a, a good sleep schedule because sometimes I get like two hours of sleep. Mm. Sometimes I get a full seven. Maybe an eight if I'm really tired. Jeff, have you uh, had the ability to get vaccinated yet? Like, is it open in your area? Yeah, I've just been really lazy about uh, getting my car fixed and then scheduling my appointments. Ah. Uh... Yeah, it's another thing. I need to, like, I really should this weekend uh, call up AAA and be like, hey, um, my car doesn't have power probably because I haven't driven it in a year. <laughs> so I don't Maybe. know if it just needs a jump <laughs> and then needs to run a little while or if it just needs a brand new battery. <laughs> mm. I'm not a, that much of a car guy. <laughs> Once I get that resolved, then I could probably get more motiva motivation to, to to do the vaccine. Right now, it seems like we're, if anything, they're still going to be having us working from home for a while. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they they sent us brand spanking new uh, MacBooks, Ooh. which, by the way, oh, they, they sent it one. to me. I got it. And then about five to ten days after I received it and have been using it, they say, oh, by the way, make sure you send back your Chrome box. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to send back my Chrome box? Yeah, there was a uh, return label in there. There there was a return label in there? I never saw that. That Flip through the, through the stuff. Oh, there it is. There's nothing here saying make sure to return the Chrome box. <laughs> and then, mm. <laughs> a couple days later, <laughs> they say, hey, we're doing some testing. Hey, make sure you test this stuff out with your Chrome box. <laughs> as well and i'm like i just packed up my chromebox to ship out <laughs> i haven't shipped it out yet because uh, i'm really bad about adulting <laughs> <sighs> but, why do you suddenly tell us this i'm so confused it's like what did you like be like before you sent out the macbook speed say hey we're sending you macbooks when you get it here's the things you need things we would like you to do <laughs> can you test between these failure <laughs> what we have here is a failure, failure to, to communicate, communicate. <laughs> this is this is a constant gripe i have about my workplace is they don't like telling us the stuff they just send us stuff and I'm like, great, I'll use it. But... So you're not really describing anything new for any of us, technically. No, pretty much. I'm just, I'm just venting. I, I'm, I'm, venting no, 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 no. I'm, not, I'm not criticizing your venting. I'm just saying, like, your situation doesn't seem all that unique, like, compared to, to some of us. Because, you know, I used to work in telecom, and the running joke was, you know, for a telecommunications company... That last ha that last part of the name, you know, industry really kind of fails. Yeah, it, and we it's have hilarious. All these telephones, but we don't know what the fuck to do with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was more about like people just wouldn't put details into things, and you're like, what? Yeah. Um, well, uh, it, it, it's yeah. it's really what what I kind of find uh, uh, somewhat ironic. I'm not even sure if that's the right term for this, but uh, one of my gripes about my team lead, who I tolerate um mm -hmm. is that she provides too much information especially during during our our team huddles 
our team huddles could be a lot shorter if she wouldn't just start explaining like reasons why things are. But then there's all these gaps in like actual and in, in the information she pro provides. We don't really need to know. We don't really necessarily care about it. It doesn't affect us directly or something. It says, I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. Yeah, you need to do this. We don't need to do this. And, and then the stuff we do need to do isn't communicated to us. <laughs> mm. So mm -mm -mm. It's, it's, it, it's, it's these times that I just end up bursting, which I think is probably one of my, my major flaws is, is there's just most of the time I'm back. I'm calm. I'm usually calm reserved, but then these really Stupid things happen, and I can't help but blow. But fair, 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 fair. Yeah, and and me being uh, an additional idiot, I got myself a, a, a magic keyboard. Uh, I, I mean, I already have a MacBook for myself, so I can use it even without my for stuff without my work stuff. But. Um, it makes it a lot easier when I have, it, have my MacBook hooked up to my two monitors just the way that I have set it because I put my keyboard in my lap normally, at least when I was using the Chromebox. And because the keyboards that they've provided us are all Windows keyboards, well, you can still use it for, you know, like, instead of, like, Command-C or Command-V for copy-paste, um, uh, I have to use Windows C and Windows V, and then there's the 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 shortcut for for uh, pasting without formatting or match formatting or whatever it's called, called um, which is different than on Windows machines, just a little bit. And I I know it. I can on a Mac keyboard. I can just quickly do it, but trying to do it on a Mac. With a Windows keyboard, I have no idea how the proper way to do it, how the, how the keys are lined up. So I wanted to get a Mac keyboard that I can easily do that. Because I can't easily have the MacBook on my lap with the way mm. the cables are plugged up. So I still need I would need to use the external keyboard. So I got myself a, a Magic keyboard so I can easily do that. Um. Which I could still uh, use okay. after this whole thing because I've got a Mac, my own personal MacBook. So it's not like I've spent a boatload of money because I got the Mac version, <laughs> the Apple version <laughs> of the wireless keyboard. That's another thing. It's also wireless, so I don't have all these cords flopping around. But anyways, that's my rants. Damon, how about you? Tell us again. Um. Okay. Get back to the dock. There we are. Uh. Oh. Yeah. Concert in the can. Money in the bank. Um. Really quick and dirty. Um. The men's chorus did their um. Spring concert. I was gonna say final. No. 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 Um. Their spring concert, String of Pearls, in April. Um, it went online virtually then. Um, it did really well. Um, actually, you know, after our last week, I had a board meeting and we discussed how it went and it went pretty well. It hit its goal. Um, and overall, the course is doing well. It was our 30th anniversary concert. So yay for that. And it, you know, some good music, um, some complaints about stuff but not much that we can really do about some of it because the idea was to um, have a little fun that we always do. Um, but apparently people want to see the chorus and not dancers. Well, that Fair. sounds specific. Fair. Well, okay. So, okay. <laughs> really quick. Trying to like, but we have, we were doing the concert virtually and to expedite things, 
and put a, take a lot of the load off of the the chorus as well as the the production staff. I mean, it was decided that we would do um, archive recordings of numbers that we have, re you know format them like vocally or you know um, audio audio audibly audio, anyway, mm-hmm. and and present them. But since these were songs that have been sung like ten so years ago or less maybe less than that uh, or more than that um it was decided like let's um have dancers perform to these numbers as opposed to trying to somehow have the chorus lip sync to songs that they never sung um the chorus numbers i should say so um um so we got these, we have this dance company we've used in the past and they're always a good partner. Um, and um, they are a more modern dance troupe. And the first number we did was, um, it was essentially actual couple. I think the song was called, it was Tenderly, the Rosemary Clooney song. Very pretty song. Um, and we had couples like real, um, I'll say gay couples um, perform these t- numbers, this just little kind of waltz dance to it. Um, and it was really cute. Um, but it that was probably the only one. The other one we did, we did um, Take the A Train, where the guys were on a stage and kind of pretending like they were on a train. It was very weird. It didn't really work. And then the big one that most people were unsure about was one which... We had a tap, tap dancer um, doing a number to straighten up and fly right. And I thought it was fine because it's a tap dancer. Was it was it absolutely wonderful, amazing tap? No, it was a, probably a simple um, choreographed number that he did because he maybe had this much time to do it and one, you know, one or two takes. But people didn't like it. And... Mm. You know, they want to see more of the chorus, but to be blunt and honest, I I don't like we're we're we the chorus are suffering because of the fact that we're doing the concerts virtually. Not as many people are as engaged or as involved. So, yes, you can hear us singing. And yes, you know, there's a few numbers where there's a good number of us, but it's not as many as you would see if we were doing the show live. You know, we're talking about half of that number. And I think that's affecting things. Um, but again, I hope, I hope um, we're gonna take their feedback, the concert's feedback and use it productively and um, put something together that'll be a little bit more us and what we're doing so our next concert is big gay broadway so and it's to sing along so there's going to be like a bouncing ball and the words coming on the screen as we sing the song so while you're at home because it's virtual um you can sing the concert you know sing the music you know nice. fun 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 um and then money in the bank t-word away anyways <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, so money in the bank, uh, I got my stimulus gay and then I got my, um, um, woo, federal and state tax returns. Yay. Yay. Um, that was really good, especially considering being furloughed last year and them kind of like, I guess, giving more money back because of that. So cool. Um, and then um, work wise, uh, uh, I got a little merit increase. And on top of that, I got an extra thing. Um, it's hard to describe, but apparently checking trends and looking at the job that I do and what we're doing, they decided to add another extra increase on my regular salary because of that. So uh, but that won't happen until this month. I won't 
didn't see it until the 15th of this month, but um, I already know how much I'm making a year, which is nice. And um, that on top of all this money that has come in and the money we save, I, I have saved because of not working downtown, not taking the bus, not, you know, traveling to and from work. It's been pretty nice um, having a little bit of, of funds. Um, having said that, um, <laughs> I'm going to be dealing with some um, the, the pangs of being a homeowner, which is having to pay for um, updates and renovations and stuff. Um, we had some stuff on our front porch that has gone bad that we're going to need to look at and get taken care of. We had a dishwasher. No, I think that was through the warranty that got fixed eventually. And then our um, dryer, while it was a small fix, it was um, still like over $200 because it's not under the home warranty. Um, so that was always fun to find out. But um, mm. yeah. Um, yeah. So, but that's, you know, the pangs of being a homeowner is you have to pay for the stuff that when it breaks or um, figure out something. Um, you still need to get railings. <laughs> on our back steps because yeah um that just needs to be done fun fun yeah yeah good to make sure to have railings for winter and things well yeah nice up. yeah we we essentially there were like when we hit, got that snow in i want to say january february um we couldn't use the back steps like at all like there's just there was just no no way um so when like trash needed to go out <laughs> we we took it down the basement steps took the long went through way the <laughs> took, went through the garage because <laughs> that's the way to do it um uh, uh, yeah 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 gary well, I mean, I I can't relate to the home ownership aspect of things, but um, I feel you on the whole, like, spending money on stuff mm -hmm. sort of unplanned. Um, yeah, so uh, I have more to add to the saga that I described last week. So, Oh, really? Yeah, so I'll kind of uh, recap. My landlord informed me uh, about a month ago that our – that the living room windows, the front facing windows for these townhouse units were all getting replaced. Okay, whatever. Um, didn't ask for it. Don't know why it's a thing that's happening. <laughs> so, uh, this, you know, big shipment thing ends up out in the yard, covered up in a tarp. Not sure quite what it is, but it's something. Um, and probably about the same time ago, like, um, I'd been recording, I think it was a CLDR, I'm not sure. And I hear these voices and it sounds like they are, I mean, it is so crystal clear. It sounds identical. <laughs> like they're right behind me, like, <laughs> but I'm on the second floor. So I was like, why am I hearing voices? And come to find out it's the landlord talking to a contractor and they're talking about, and I thought they were talking about taking out my neighbor's bathroom window and covering it up. Um, and we were going to get new siding. So mm -hmm. fast forward to getting the uh, a call a couple weeks later that they wanted to come into my place to be able to measure the front windows. So and that was like a day or two before they were coming in. So I moved everything away from the windows, like all the furniture and or whatever was going to block it, um, you know, that kind of stuff. And I can't remember. I think I might have taken down the curtains just to mm -hmm. make it easier. Because I was like, y'all need to get the hell in and get the hell out. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's my personal space. Bad. Granted, I'm renting, but still, you know. Um, so they did. And it, later I realized that they left a piece of trim off, which is weird. Um, but whatever. So fast forward to the windows arrive. And, um, well, I should say that I got called that they were going to install them on a certain day. Uh, okay, fine. So, and I was given a heads up that we were getting new siding. So all mm. the aluminum siding on these four units, uh, the newer units, because they're six in a row, the four of us are getting all the aluminum siding taken down and they're going to put up the, the new vinyl siding. Okay, fine. Mm. But it's going to make a lot of noise. And 
uh, we were told, I was at least told I should probably take as much as I can off the walls. Because mm. there's going to be lots of like hammers and pounding and stuff. And, you know, things are going to fall off if I don't. Okay. So they did that. They came, they put the windows in. They got that knocked out in a day. Um, which was nice. The newer windows are nice. Like, it's weird to be like, ooh, these are fancy windows because they tip in so you can clean ooh. them. I know. Um, strange things you discover. Well, when they <laughs> uh, took out the windows and they replaced them, uh, what was unbeknownst to me was that the contractor hired a subcontractor and it was an Amish Mennonite crew. Um something of that of that you know community uh, faith base which is fine they're more they're more familiar and around in my area um and everyone around here is kind of aware that they do really really good like wood craftsmanship like construction and stuff like that so it didn't phase me in the least bit to see all these men with big like long gray white beards and blue you know kind of like <laughs> outfits and straw hats i was like oh okay whatever well what i didn't know was that they were going to take out my bathroom window Ah, yes, I remember you talking about this now. So, had I known that, I would have cleaned up my bathroom a little bit and taken the shower curtain that was in front of the window down, because I, I've i been here for quite a few years, and I have two shower curtains. So I have a shower curtain hanging on a curtain rug that is uh, in front of the bathroom window, and then I have the actual, like, vinyl shower curtain to the that goes on the bathroom side. And then oh. there's like a fabric, you know, kind of decorative one on the outside. So anyways, they, <laughs> I was here and I was like, what the hell are they doing? Because I was working at home on the day that this happened. And I was like, oh, that's like <laughs> hell allowed. Um, so come to find out, like I ended up walking outside and going around because I thought, did they make a mistake? Because I thought it was my neighbor who was having her window taken out. And they were, and then I realized, oh no, all four of us were having mm. our bathroom taken out. And then I thought maybe they're going to replace them. Nope. They're just being taken out completely and filled in with, you know, new framing and some insulation and yada, yada. Mm. So uh, that happened. And then I realized, well, I guess this is the time if I'm going to make a couple upgrades to my bathroom, I should do that. Um, now, I mean, I'm not asking my landlord to do any of this stuff. Like when I first moved in, one of the very first things I did was I was like, okay, all this brass shit, it got to go. No, <laughs> Not a fan of gold or yellow gold or brass per se. So uh, so I was like, okay. So I've slowly, like over the course of a couple of months when I first moved in, I replaced a lot of surface type metal items with um, this brush nickel kind of plate thing. Mm -hmm. So like I replaced the handle on the toilet, the you know, the handle that you press to flush, um, the shower curtain rod, you know, just little things. So I realized okay. like, oh, I should probably like, you know, at least get a curved shower curtain rod like I want that I didn't know those years ago. So that basically fell down the Amazon hole because <laughs> then that turned into, oh, well, I could get a new light fixture. And because uh, this the vanity sconce light fixture that I have is vintage from the 80s and it need to go. <laughs> um, I mean, technically, my bathroom is vintage from the 60s. So it's, you know, anyways. <laughs> what? You yeah. don't like that retro 80s? 60s well, no, no, no. i'm okay with the color palette like sometimes when people come here for the first time they're like whoa because they're they haven't seen a seafoam mint green like enamel bathroom set <laughs> like in a long time so to have a sink like the actual bowl and the toilet and the shower tub like you know the bathtub like in this matching color scheme with tile that matches um oh. as a trim so oh. it looks it looks cute um and it didn't bother me when i first saw it but some people when I first thought they were like wow this is this is old i was like bitch whatever so <laughs> i'm just like doing little upgrade type things so yeah so i buy all this stuff from amazon mm -hmm. um and fast forward to now i'll catch you up like what's happened in the past week so the stuff comes in uh, yesterday they came back and they finished the bathroom because in the meantime, they had a couple days after, let's say they took out the windows on a Friday, the following Monday, they came and they started doing the siding and they had it done by the end of, by, by midday Wednesday, I think. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, they got, and I didn't think about it. Mine have the most siding to get done because I have three sides. Mm-hmm. Where all my neighbors, I'm on an end, and the other neighbors, they just have the fronts and the backs. So they got the whole back done on the first day and part of the the side, the end, you know, of my place. And then they got the rest and then they finished it up the next day or so and all that. So, yes, there was lots of loud banging and everything. It was very annoying while I was trying to work from home. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, maybe I should have, like, gone into work for a day or two. But <laughs> so, but what intrigued me was the landlord had to come in on that, that Friday to look at the bathroom after they took the window out. And I said something about it. I didn't know they were taking the window out. And the landlord was like, yeah, well, the, I, we thought they were going to do that, like, next week. That's why we didn't say anything. Mm. Yeah, but you didn't say anything. Yeah, he didn't even anything. tell me that it was going to happen. Like you didn't completely say like that. anything, honey. Like right. So after they had already taken the window out and put the new stuff in, I took the shower curtain down the the liner that was up against the wall where the window was. So I mean, so when they came up, they they had access to see it or whatever, and they kind of muttered amongst themselves about what they were going to do. And it occurred to me that the contractor and the landlord did not have plans. On what to do on the inside of the bathrooms. They were just taking the windows out. And they were covering. Over, like filling them in and covering over them from the exterior. Oh. Right. And part of the reason they were taking the windows out. Which I get. Is that they were older wood frame windows. And so they were basically just going to be a problem. Like you know mm-hmm. in terms of humidity. And like you know mold mildew. And all that kind of jazz. So I didn't see it as that big a deal. But it gets hella dark in the bathroom now. When there's no natural light coming in. Mm -hmm. so anyways i was told it would be a week from saturday that they would probably come back and do the bathroom thing so sure Mm -hmm. enough yesterday they came back and they put in this plastic vinyl i don't know if i want to call it vinyl but anyways um i've seen it before in 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 other uh bathrooms more kind of industrial uh or whatever but Mm -hmm. anyways plastic walling kind of thing and it's not a surround it's just on the back and they had to put in an extra panel piece and so anyways they did that yesterday and i was like okay good so they came in and then they left and then the landlord stopped a couple minutes later and like took a look thought it was okay and left and i was like yeah okay she's not the best judge of that but anyways <laughs> no 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 i mean don't get me wrong like she's no not no, a, no she's not she's not gonna she's be done, the one that's gonna have to live in it right she's not a contractor i mean you know and luckily the contractor did say to me that it was going to be, I should let it sit for 24 hours before taking a shower. That way the, the caulk that they used around the outside to seal it, you know, will uh, have cured. Okay, fine. Mm. So that yesterday I was like, okay, well, I got the day free. So let me do some touch-up painting because I still have the original paint can uh, for the anti-mold mildew, like high humidity space. It was one of the first things I did when I moved in is that I painted, like I painted the two bedrooms and the living room. And uh, the bathroom and Mm -hmm. my former roommate had helped me um, paint the ceilings, thank God. And so for the bathroom, I knew that I wanted to kind of seal everything, you know, with that kind of a a paint that cures, you know, and and prevents any issues. Because even though there is a a ventilation like uh, Mm -hmm. fan. I was like, I just want it to be like nice and bright and white and and all that jazz. So I still have said paint in the basement. So I read up online that depending on the paint, it could last up to 10 years. If it hasn't had any air in the can, if it was properly sealed, all that jazz, and it hasn't gone bad. Um, So I got blessed, got the paint out yesterday. So I'm doing a little touch up paint here and there and all this kind of jazz. Um. And then I got the light kit out. So I take the old light down. Oh, that was a whole adventure. I had to figure out which breaker to turn off. <laughs> and then, because they're not labeled. So oh, I'm like flipping breakers and running through like my place to try to figure out which one goes where. <laughs> sort of. So here's the oddity. The breaker that controls the bathroom also controls this bedroom, the hallway light, and the basement. Two floors down. Because that makes hella sense. But anyways. So <laughs> I'm just like, what in the world? So I turned around and uh, so I get the light kit out and then I'm trying to figure out, okay, so I got three wires. Like I already turned the power off. I'm doing things by flashlight because I don't got no window anymore. 
I mean, it's not pitch black dark, but, it, you know, it's not helpful. And the fact that the hallway light, which doesn't directly shine into the bathroom, but the fact that, like, yeah, I, I have a too. I have a very limited opportunity for light, so to speak, or trying to make it work. And then I realize I have the light kit and I'm looking at it and I'm like, Where's, there's no mounting board. What they call the mounting board that goes against mm-hmm. the wall. Like you, you do the wiring piece first and then you put the mounting board and you put that onto the wall and then you put the thing over it, which is what everybody thinks is the light. You know, with the seat. You know. <sighs> so I had to complain to Amazon, request a refund, <laughs> return it to UPS, order the replacement, which isn't coming till Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So, Gross. yeah. So today I'm probably going to put up the, shirt, the curved shower curtain rod. Oh, that was the other thing. So I cleaned out underneath the vanity because I bought a new faucet. Ah. Uh-huh. Then I discovered that there are... There currently are not uh, on and off water controls oh, that underneath way. the faucet in the bathroom, which means it runs all the way down to the basement. And then I went into the basement and cleared away some cobwebs and tried to figure out where the water controls are down there. And I've discovered that apparently the water lines run up in through the wall. So they come out of the hot water heater or the inline and then uh, the, where it appears they go to the bathroom upstairs on the second floor is they cut into right at the top of the cement, like a uh, block wall in the basement. And it goes right above it and then goes up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Did we lose Gary? Uh, no, but we got some light. No. No, I'm still here. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Can hear you now. Yeah. I don't know why I had a blip for a second. Ah, uh, it happened. What was the last thing you were saying, David? No, I just saw that you said it went. Uh, I just had a face. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you, you, said you were like what this. I was describing that the topic went up. Yeah, you went up. I was. It's it. I don't know. Um. I. Uh. uh <laughs> like not having that like turn off in in the area and just having to go all the way down the basement like no thank you and then like we had some um issue well the shower we had the um we had some issues and he ended up having we ended up having to turn the main water switch off like so all the water was off in order to get everything done because it doesn't have one because it's a shower um (sighs) <sighs> anyway. so that's what I figured out. I, I I was messaging my best friend uh H yesterday and was like, so discovered that I don't have turnoffs for the bathroom. Like, and I was already like, I've already replaced the faucet in my kitchen years ago. Um, because I bought a faucet that I liked and then I held on to it for a couple of years, and then I don't know why, but I finally got the bug up my button. I changed it. And I did it all like thanks to YouTube, like read all the stuff and all that. That one was a pain because it has two cupboard doors on the underside and a divider in between. So you can't easily get under there unless you're like, I don't know, maybe 12. So (laughs) for the bathroom upstairs, I was like, okay, granted, we don't have the divider, like both doors open. and It'll be a little bit easier for access, but it's a much smaller space because the kitchen is a dual basin sink. And this is just one. Mm-hmm. So I cleared it out yesterday and then I looked underneath there and then I realized I didn't have a way to shut off the water. So I've come to the determination. Yes. Like I have to shut off the water to the whole place, mm-hmm. drain some water from the lines. In order, <laughs> yeah. So I might be reaching out to my wow. former roommate who kind of does construction type work and be like, Hey, <laughs> can we do dinner and catch up? And can you please replace my faucet? <laughs> <laughs> Because what I'm doing... At least you're buying him dinner. <laughs> well, I mean, I realized, like, I should compensate him for his time. And I realized, you know, that... Um, like, I'm, all these things, these little things I'm doing, like, replacing doorknobs and, like, you know, late switch plates and crap like that. Like, it's all aesthetically my choosing. And, uh, and the landlord would not necessarily compensate me for that because it's not stuff that they want done or need done because mm. things are functional like the faucet that was in the kitchen sink was functional but it was a utility sink faucet set why i have no idea mm. and it didn't have a sprayer mind you there was a hole in the, the sink 
set up for a sprayer. It was just plugged. So that's why I was like, okay, I'm going to end up, you know. So, all right, fine. The faucet's not going to get done right away. And then, um, so I did some touch-up paint stuff yesterday. Anyways, it was just a hell of a day <laughs> that it gets to continue today. And Woo. you say when you get the new and then every other and when you get that fix. Yeah. Right. So within uh, the next week, I will at least have the new shower curtain rod and have touched up the paint and got a new light fixture. So that'll be nice. Um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, the faucet thing will have to wait. I'm not going to run and do that right away. Um, so that was kind of all the home stuff that I would relate to you on. Like, you know, you just you want to get one thing done and then you don't realize it's going to lead to other things. So, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple hundred dollars later, I've, you know, been buying a bunch of shit to update my bathroom. <laughs> um, but really, the re the reality is getting older revelations. Uh, <laughs> and it, I mean, it's and not to bring things down, but um, I kind of talked a little bit about it last week. Um, so and, and I actually I don't want to I don't want to screw anything up. <laughs> um, I want to knock on wood somewhere. So. The month of April seemed to have a lot of like uh, notifications of people who have left us. Mm -hmm. And that became very challenging, like from a mental health perspective, because I was like, I knew, you know, respectively a bunch of these people. And, you know, my mom had passed in April two years ago. So I was just like, yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of this mm -mm. that much. Um so, I mean, some were sudden, some were unexpected. Um, some some individuals tend to be private about their health and they don't really say or, or anything. So when they're not doing well and then you find out that they've actually been hospitalized for quite a while and then they passed and their partner, you know, their husband or spouse announces, mm -hmm. it's, it's very shocking. Um, so, yeah, just trying to process a, a lot of that. Um, because as we age, as we get older, this will, I, I regret to say, probably become more norm. Um, you know, that there will be less people that we know uh, around, so to speak. I mean, my grandparents have kind of talked about it. I mean, I, my dad's parents would talk, like, often about how they used to watch, they probably still do, Entertainment Tonight just for the memoriam section, like, to mm. see stars, you know, mostly film, uh, you know, stars have you know passed away or, or whatever different stuff of that nature speaking of which now that we're recording this on may 2nd in the past day olympia dukakis uh, mm -hmm. passed away and the gay community is in mourning or at least the msm community seems to be because i my twitter and my facebook have been full of recognition about like her amazing skill as an actress um, her, you know, the films that she's been in that have been highlights and touchstones of the gay community, um, Steel Magnolias, Moonstruck, um, mm -hmm. you know, the classic lines that she's had. So um, she was Anna Madrigal um, in the Armistead Maupin series. So, yeah, she's had a big, big influence. So um, I, f I see lots of people are not happy about the news that she that she passed away at 89. So there's been that, you know, and then you just, you know, you get older and your body doesn't function like it used to. And, you know, I sat on the couch yesterday after doing a bunch of stuff and painting and all these things. And then all of a sudden I was like, damn, I need to sleep. <laughs> True. Not nap, sleep. I need to take a nap. <laughs> so I turned around and... <laughs> chilled out and like i was like you know i kind of sort of fell asleep sitting up on the couch for a while that's when i was like okay i obviously need to go to bed so that was that was the the story behind that oh and i also want to sleep yeah. thing. <laughs> well it's just that i exhausted myself like i haven't been that active in, in a while mm -hmm. um and i also said this uh when the contractor was here with an assistant yesterday i made the joke to my friend who was a lesbian i said you know, I, I can't say this for like for women. I said, but for men, there's always this fantasy mm. of 
you know, the the contractor, you know, whoever it is, you know, the service provider coming into your home and being hot or whatever. And I was like, that is never the case. I'm like, it is called <laughs> fantasy for a reason. <laughs> truly. A service provider in more than one ways. Wow. It just never, like, I, I understand that. Like, I've had that happen. Like, that whole, I have, I have yet to have, well, no, there's one. Okay, sorry. But for the most part, I have yet to have a contractor or, or you know, technician or whatever come to the house to my house or my apartment that I've been like, hmm, he yeah, you you mm, you might you might be cute. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um there was I've one. I've been lucky enough to have one or two of those. Not many, but one or two. Yeah. Just like oh, they're hot enough to like you like if you said something or did something like maybe something would go down like maybe, but I've I've only had one, um I think hold on, yeah just the one. <laughs> well, I had I I was thinking of one. There was another, um, but he had he he had that um, like he obviously was a smoker and it was just it was. Like a heavy oh. smoker, so it was kind of wafted off of him, and I was kind of like, "Oh no, I don't want to." No, it's okay if you smoke, but like it just—it was so like overpowering. Like I was like, "I'm glad you were outside doing stuff as opposed to inside doing stuff." Right. Um, but is that a Monet? It, it it looks good from a distance. Like so, like he, he okay. Let me put it like this: if if I were on a scale of one to 10 in regards to things I was attracted to, he was probably a six or a seven. Like, okay, like maybe, but, but then when like he came up close and everything kind of like, I started, you know, smelling everything and whatever. It was kind of like, mm, no, I, yeah. It went down to like four. <laughs> yeah. Anywho. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't kind of understand that. So, yeah, it was quite amusing to me. I was just like, yeah, they're not really yeah. all that. So today I get to do a, just a little bit more uh, touch up paint and put up the curtain rod. And at least that part will be done. And then I have to wait for the new light fixture to arrive. Mm -hmm. And I'm not installing the old one. I was like, yeah. screw it. Uh, so I'm just using flashlights. It's weird as that it is. <laughs> yeah. You just use a flashlight in your bathroom. Can you, can you, do you have a, feel like a power outage sort of thing? Candles? Well, so here's the odd, oddity of it all is I was like, sure, I've got flashlights. And then I went hunting for them yesterday and I was like, are you kidding me? Like, where the hell are all of them? I know I have like at least a couple. Yeah. And I have That's... my dad's old mag light from when he um, did security, like as a, as a hired, um, he wasn't technically a cop. But, mm -hmm. you know, he had worked um, security for different uh, events and stuff. So he has this big, heavy ass black mag light that like you could literally beat the shit out of somebody with. And so I finally found it yesterday because I was like, I know it's here in my place or whatever. It is not very bright, y'all. Like, <laughs> I was like, what the hell is this? So I got to get a new bulb for it, I think, or like, mm -hmm. yeah. So luckily, the drill set that I bought years ago the battery, the, the battery case pops off and exchanges with a whole uh, LED light rig. Like, mm -hmm. so instead of it being a trigger drill, like it's, uh, instead it's a, like 12 LED lights or whatever. And that's pretty mm -hmm. decent. But even mm -hmm. so, I'm just like, okay. Well, you're not used to, you're, you're, you're going to have to get used to the new norm because you're probably used to natural light from your window um, right. coming in. And that's going to be difficult. Um, you may, oh no, those are never really good. I was thinking like those tap light things, but those are, those barely give you any light to begin with. They're not. So everyone, if you see those fucking commercials where like, they're like in the closet and they tap it in like the closet, like brightly lit. No, that is, that is never the case. I don't care who made it. If it's the official, whatever. It is never that bright ever. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying <laughs> yeah you are not replacing like electric lights and light bulbs with a tap light right oh um 
that are good for like the occasion. Like you, oh, this is this this closet is slightly dim from the light from my ceiling fan. Let me tap a light in here so that I can get a little bit more illumination. That's what they're there for. Right. I have in my in my uh, bedroom closet. I have the light switch that lights up. Have you seen those? Ah, yeah. So it's an actual like on off light switch, but it has LEDs around the outside edge, so to speak, to help light up. And I agree with you. It is not as bright as a full functioning bulb. But then again, it's not supposed to be like I am literally turning it on to locate the one thing I can't see immediately, but I know approximately where it is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. we had um, when we did LaDonna's closet um, the other day. uh, Well, last year when we cleared everything out, we put a I realized this closet in the office. There's no light. There's nothing. So you're Mm -hmm. the only light you're getting is whatever is coming in from outside and when you're standing in the cl- door of the closet and you're a big person you're not really getting that much light so uh we put a like one of my um desk lamps up like up high and we have a cord turning down from it and then it is connected to an extension cord because i can't turn it on because it's too high so it's just an unplug and plug so there's just cord just like hanging <laughs> nice <laughs> And then there's an extension cord that's connected to, you know, plugged into the wall that you just have to connect it and then it turns on. And again, since it's a desk lamp, it gets a very nice, decent amount of light in there. I can't go in the closet now because there's a lot of shit in there, but that's another story. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Closets get full of stuff. FYI. Okay. Yeah. So I've, I've got too many things lots of lots of things Mm -hmm. but yeah so but uh, you bring up a good point i hadn't thought about that well and like the lamp like the the light equipment that i was the new set that i had was taking me from two bulbs to three bulbs Mm. and i realized technically it looks probably a little too big for the bathroom because it's not that big of a bathroom Mm -hmm. so the replacement one i i'm already ordered is two bulbs but i know i'm gonna probably go with brighter like mm-hmm. lumen, yeah. you know, LED mm-hmm. lights. Um, although it'll be interesting because the old one, the lights hung down. Mm-hmm. And the new style that I'm getting, I think it'll it'll be too much. It, and it's reversible. You could move it so that the lights point down. Ah. And lights point up. So I'm going to put it so that the lights point up. Mm-hmm. And I'll be curious to see how much brighter it makes the bathroom because technically all of the walls in the ceiling and in the bathroom or white. Ah. So I don't know. It might be a really good improvement. We'll see. Might be. We'll see. I got a lesson yesterday in electricity. I did not get shocked, just for everybody's <laughs> clarification. Because after I took the light thing down, then I was like, okay, great. I got these three colored wires. What do I do with them? Because they don't match to the description with the light. And this was before I realized the mounting bar was missing. And I'm trying to follow these very simple instructions that say you have to like, you know, do the, uh, what is it called? The ground. And yeah, I got it. And I was like, I don't know which, which is which. So, and then when I realized that the mounting plate was missing, I was like, oh, okay, this is already a problem. So I had to ship that back. But, and then anyways, last night when I was really tired, I went online and was like, okay, let me read about electricity and wiring. So I went to this website that was suggested through Google and it made me laugh because this woman has this home that kind of makes me think of the pioneer woman. If you know who Mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, But she was really polite, but man, what an education. She talked about like explaining electricity and how you measure it and all these different kinds of cords and like the the different ampages that they like work on and the color combinations that come in and what the colors mean. I was really super impressed. I was like, wow, like you're just not some lay housewife who's like, let me start a blog. Like she actually (laughs) – fully knew everything of what she was describing and explaining it. And so I saved that page as an open tab on my browser. So when the light kit comes in, I can remember green is ground. I think black is hot and white is neutral. I think that's what it is. Anyways, but it'll help me when I go to put those, the light thing in. Nice. It's a little, little home stuff and, you know, just getting older as a thing. The Adventures in Red Raining. 
Yes. All right. Agreed. Shall we move on? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's go into this. I only did that because we don't have much. Uh, we got uh, a comment on our blog. It says, hi, C.O.L. Wolf Wolf. I'm a pup from India. I'm figuring things out as they come. I saw your podcast and was wondering if, if I could join you for an episode. Thanks. And look forward to Puffly Yours, Pup Max. Uh, my, my question is, is there more information? Mm. What do you mean by more information? <laughs> like, to pick- that's the comment. Like, <laughs> more well, oh you mean like more about them yeah it's like it, it's like okay so you would like to join us uh, for an episode what's the topic yeah well, well i think like like it, it's it, it's one of those things where when we have people on we have a reason why they're on like uh the reason right. why we have edward angeline cook uh, 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 Doctor Cisco, um, uh, 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 Chess, uh, 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 Cubs, uh, Tony. Um, you know, we we have them on because we have a topic that goes with them. So, if you would like to be on, Pope uh, throws a pitch. Nice. Uh, and shoot us an email, uh, CubsLadderGmail dot com. Uh, and Gary will review it. <laughs> well, what I was going to say is, I think the fact that they're a pup from India in and of itself is is interesting because we do not know, yeah, the country and culture. Um, True. What little I know of the pup community, especially in terms of like international, is kind of like. Canada, Britain, Australia, US. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, ex- I never thought of it like uh, our familiarity has been that because English speakers, but I assumed that it would be like a, most anywhere else in the world, probably less in, in some places, obviously. But, right. well, um, as someone who is in the pop community, um, I can kind of give it, it varies for mm-hmm. sure. And in certain countries, there's a totally different, like, behavior and culture and and what have you about it. So for it would be interesting, and I will say this, Pup Max, if you're listening, um, like, I think there is a possibility of having a conversation in regards to, like, how things are in that part of the world in regards to, say, the pup community, the kink community um, are maybe even in a like a larger overarching thing of the gay community yeah um since we don't have a lot of information about you you know you know i i would love to know how you found out about the show um um and um if you consider yourself a bear or a cub or what have you because it would be those kind of things because that would be a very interesting i could see that being a very interesting conversation to have but you know, if you're interested, so if you're interested and yeah. it seems like you are, like send us an email and we can kind of discuss it and go from there. Yeah. The be- best way, if you have a topic or something that even you would like to join for, the best thing to do is to shoot us an email. Uh, for one thing, it allows us to contact you easily um, in order to uh, figure it out. Also, um, considering your, <sighs> what is it like? 10 and a half, 11 and a half, maybe, maybe nine and a half. It is something and a half hours away from us, at least uh, uh, between here and Bangalore. Well, and then here's an interesting thing. It just occurred to me that did not come to mind a week ago. They didn't say that they live in India. They said that they're from India. Yeah, true. So they might yeah. not be elsewhere in the world. They could be here in the U.S. They could be in the U.K. They could be, you know, New Zealand or somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So with, with lack of information, so, I'm just gonna take take from India, meaning that you're currently there. But obviously, we need more information, and definitely give us an email. So, uh, throw us your so, your pitch on the uh, topic that you're 
uh, wanting to discuss, and uh, we'll see if we can schedule it again. So right now in Bangalore, it is 8.54 p.m. So it's 11.24 here in Eastern Time East Zone. Coast. Mm-hmm. East Coast Time Zone. So, so it's nine, yeah. nine and a half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nine and a half for us, ten and a half for Jeff. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So we could technically record earlier in the day, like we do now, and it'd be after, you know, early evening, afternoon as a possibility. Well, that's but, assuming yeah. because uh, we're we're coming up on that time when we're, we're we we normally have schedule changes. So yeah, yeah. recording I, I time understand. is changed. <laughs> so that, that's where things kind of get kind difficult. Of, yeah, yeah, I, I, right yeah. now, potentially, yes. But just putting it out there. Email us. That's 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 my my email us with a little bit more information. That's all we're asking. Uh, also, we have a Twitter follower, dslave twenty four. He's dslave, the one and only. Gary, uh, over this uh, the month of April, uh, we only had we had we had two and a half shows, or three and a half shows. I can count. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so in what the month of April, the, we had the half never to see the light of day. <laughs> well, something like that. Uh, episode five ninety six was the what's going on for March. Then five ninety seven, we did a let's talk about food and gay brunch. Brunch. Is brunch gay? Have the gays taken over brunch? Is the food gay? Like, what really makes that gay? What so that is was the, gay? That was that. That was that <laughs> was not the topic. <laughs> brunch was the focus. Not so much about gay foods per se, but we did talk about food and what people think of when it comes to brunch, those kind of things. Um, five ninety eight, uh, COL five ninety eight was landscape and relationships trust part two. Uh, with our resident sex therapist, Edward Angelini Cook, um, who will be joining us very soon again uh, for another episode. And um, I just spotted something online recently that I sent to him last night uh, and was like, show topic question mark? And he gave me, I think, applause emoji. So mm-hmm. more to come on that later. Because we mm-hmm. always like having them join. Yeah. yeah. And wait a minute. I need to correct myself. I think I just said that he'll be on next week. Not next week. Two weeks. Uh-huh. Two weeks. Because next week is the milestone show. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Because yeah, uh, which we were going to do today, except for things. It's okay. Anyways, it happened. But we could go into this. <laughs> All right. Um, before copyright claim. Um. Too late. So last week I did not have one, but this week I did have one. Um, it's uh, Lazy Morning Biscuits. Gee, I wonder why. It's uh, uh, Alexander's Homemade Biscuits, a.k.a. Fiery Biscuits. And uh, he got a couple uh, new picks, and he's sexy as always. And the Twitter crop is intriguing to me. Because I see all these people post stuff and they're like, fucking Twitter crop. Because, like, whatever they want to be seen on the, on the like, the timeline as you scroll or whatever isn't really what's showing. Like, it, it seems to randomly or arbitrarily kind of pick something else. What cracks me up about this is that the way that these pictures are showing, like, they're, it looks like the pictures were taken in a way that they cut off what some people might really be interested in. Mm-hmm. But that is not the case. You just have to click on the image. Yes. yes. So, yeah. So the the big thing you learn learn is always click on the images on Twitter because yes. you, you might be able to get to see more or actually what you want to see. Although, to be fair, the way they are, I'm happy. I click them, happier. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well they kind of sound been. like David's. Oh. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Jumping David? back to you. And am I? No, I'm not on mute. Okay. Um, 
So mine is from Mr. C. Barricus. Barricus. Oh, wow. <sighs> Coffee's kicking in, y'all. Woo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> um, and um, it says, who's going to service me then? And um, it is a this beautiful, beautiful man in a um, unbuttoned dress shirt a suit coat or jacket and he has a harness on which you can see under through and yes when you click the image yes you get you know yeah who's going to serve with this and you're looking at the original picture like it's just his face and 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 him looking at the camera nice little little uh-huh. uh, mid shot uh-huh. absolutely and then you click on the image and you get um his 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 dick so yeah <laughs> and belly and 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 thighs and and hands and yeah and he's saying who's going to service this and i'm like i, I, I will and i think <laughs> he i think he's uncut but he yes. it's not the one where like the skin go like there's further skin uh beyond the tip of the penis it like just covers it which to me is is good the, <laughs> again this is all my opinion i, I just want to say this there's nothing wrong with it, with anything but what i i find attractive in an uncut penis is the one where it's just covering not um anything beyond that then i start kind of getting a little grossed out oh but that's me that's me that's a personal issue and i, I will say it's a personal that. issue Oh, everybody's sexy. Love his eyes. As long as you get love his eyes. Love his eyes. You got a great beard too. Yes. Look at that beard. Yes. He's a sexy man. He, and he's in um United Kingdom, so very nice. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Well, at least he's to have taken you up on your offer, Damon. So, I mean, you just kind of oh, have to get I to mean, the UK. So, yeah, that's that's let's see, uh, <laughs> a couple more years. A year, I mean, <laughs> you were just uh, you know, talking about you know, Extra the, the money in the bank thing. So, yeah, I mean, you could yeah. theoretically plan a trip. Yeah, I could, I could, it, it's it's something, it's a yeah. thought. Trust, trust is a thought because, <laughs> well, Jim wants to go to England, you know, um, yeah, so we're, we're, you know, that's something we've always, we've thought about doing. That would be like a, a major <laughs> trip, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going just for the dick. Don't, don't get it twisted. Like, that's just, extra. But, well, you do want to go see big Ben. Exactly. I mean, I was and referencing Big Carl Rock, and, but, right. Big, <laughs> <laughs> and Big and Big Charles and Big Dick. There you go. Anyway, <laughs> but it it's it is a it is a a trip we've we've talked about doing at some point because we both do want to go um, to that area. Um, when I don't know. Um, I think both of us will need to get passports updated or renewed. And and all that stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, Gary, since you've got two, uh, well, I'm laughing because Lloyd in the live chat said, "I'm pretty sure the tweet formula for your s- section is Gary's will be avant-garde smut, Damon will have a harness, and Jeff will just be fiery biscuits." <laughs> all all I have to say is fair. Yeah. I mean, it's not completely true, but yeah. no, no, no. It, the, I, I think after seeing the next uh, yours, he's basically got the right of it. <laughs> I'm going to let Damon reply to Lloyd's second comment. I'm not reading that out loud. My uh, <laughs> Twitter picks. The first one is called More Cosplay, and it's Orin Bear. Uh, and... What they wrote was, I want to do more photos with this cosplay. And uh, recently they started an OnlyFans. And uh, they have a Captain America outfit that they um, like to wear or can wear. And 
and take off or partially <laughs> wear, as the case may be. Um, and he just looks hella sexy, uh, showing off his yellow gruff jock with the Captain America cosplay um, outfit. So I say, you know, kudos to you and uh, mm-hmm. be supportive. Go support. Uh, support the costuming community. Yes. You too can be a jock supporter. Uh huh. Mm hmm. In addition to that one, I also have um, one called Hop In with a winky uh, face, kind of a, a moticon. And uh, this is Koshiro. Oh. This man is gorgeous. Oh, those <laughs> eyes, that goatee. Those um, he is showering. Yes, he is. He is thick built from head to toe, uh, tatted, inked, broad chest, belly, huge ass thighs that could smash my face. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, say, Gary. Say, <laughs> um, and you know, he's just the total package of goods, and you know, mm-hmm. quite quite alluring. Mm-hmm. I could watch yes. this on repeat all day. Some of us maybe have. Um, <laughs> ooh, the thirst is real, child. I'm like going mm-hmm. through these replies. Through the replies. Oh yeah. My favorite. My favorite thing about Twitter, honestly, Tumblr never really did this to my knowledge. Twitter does this whole like, there's more replies, more replies, and you get to the bottom of the more replies, and then there's the sensitive replies that you can like open up to see and it makes me laugh because i know those are the like most perverse like comments or gifts or Mm -hmm. pictures or whatever um and then you know it just makes me laugh and then sometimes they're really kind of mild and i'm like they're not all that spicy like (laughs) people saying things like holding weird algorithm of that what can you say yeah uh, mm-hmm. Moving on into the links, uh, I'm going to recommend the Will You Pop Popcorn Popper kick- Kit, and uh, you can get it at smile.amazon.com. Um, and the kit comes with a stovetop popcorn popper. So it's basically a pot with a contraption lid that has a crank in the handle. That basically stirs what's in the uh, pot. And it comes with a um, real theater uh, popcorn kit, which has the oil, the salt, and the popcorn. So you could just like, you just cut out the top, just dump it into the pot, put the pot on the, uh, on the, uh, your burner, turn your burner on. Do it in this order. You don't turn your burner on, then put the pot on. You put the pot on, then turn on the burner. So you don't preheat your pot. Uh, and mm-hmm. then and then you just crank. And just let it do its thing. So about five minutes later, eventually it will start feeling harder to, to crank because of the popping and everything. That's when you stop. Wait till it uh, slows down on the popping. Then you can take it off and dump it into a pot. It's kind of like, or into a bowl. So it's kind of like the uh, 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 the, the movie theater uh, type popcorn machines, except on your stove, because you know how they how they. Well, it had the movie theater one has a motor on the on the thing, but um, for the like the side flap opens, you can just turn mm-hmm. it over and dump it down into the bowl, and. It is so nice. It doesn't have to deal with any electronics, so nothing necessarily breaks down. It's just a simple, simple machine. Uh, a lever, pulley kind of sort of thing, I suppose. And the uh, company uh, Wabash Valley Farms uh, that makes this uh, also send, sells. Um, other types of uh, popping kits too. So if you don't like the the full movie theater one, they've also got some with less salt. 
Mm-hmm. Um, less salt and oil. Uh, they also have like open fire pop and uh, uh, or- organic popping kit. If you're into that, sweet and salty kettle corn. If you if you want to look at their their kits, they sell tubs. Uh, they sell a whole bunch of other things too. But um, I'm thoroughly enjoying the uh, really pop popcorn popper. Um, I mean, you have to stay in there for five day- minutes cranking, but eh, whatever. It gets it gets a little bit boring, but hey. Afterwards, you get some good popcorn. So you put in a little bit of labor, a little effort mm-hmm. for a good reward. Yeah. I, I always nice. I always go with the full the full six quart thing. They've got I think I got a recipe for like something that's really small and then one that's like the full six quarts. And I'm like, why would I go with the small one? <laughs> right. Uh, in addition, uh, and actually this is related to, to, to last week, but I'm also recommending, um, the guild's single, uh, I'm the one that's cool, which is about, uh, nerds being cool nowadays versus all the prom queen bitches. (laughs) Interesting. That quote, palm cream. I don't remember what it was, but uh, it, it it has Felicia Day. It, it, you probably it, it for the those nerds who've been following the guild. They've got like four or five songs featuring the the stars of the web series, the guild. So, this is one of them. Cool. I don't think we actually uh, came to why I had selected that last week, but is that? I think that was a callback to the pre-show last week. Possibly. Damon's muted. Uh, yeah, I just noticed that. It's a, it was a callback to the pre-show, because um, I think we had mentioned like you know we are talking about I think maybe talking about D and D or something, something, something. Oh, I know what it was. I think I know what it is. Because now in Facebook, when I'm scrolling through, one of the adverts I get, let me go back because it just came up again. It (laughs) it cracks me up. Where are you hiding at, bitch? I just saw you a second ago. Um, Or is it further down? Oh, no, there it is. D&D Beyond has Mm -hmm. a spring sale, y'all. 10 days, 25% off all books. Mm -hmm. Ends today, May 2nd. So if you're not listening live, sorry. 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 <laughs> Just keep watching. So anyway, they have sales all the time. Yeah, so I was I was making fun of the fact that like y'all have infected my Facebook somehow and now I get ads for D and D beyond. So mm-hmm. not that I'm complaining, but I'm just kinda like, Oh, okay, that's not really something I was looking for, but you know. Now now you got it. But, so, mm-hmm. but that's okay, I get ads oh. for all sorts of crazy things. So I'm like, Oh, that's nice. Oh, Mr. Damon, what is your pick this week? Um, so I have, uh, oh yeah, so this is Gaston from Broadway Villains Party. It's a um, fun little um, link to a, a cabaret performance by two guys doing the song Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. Pause. Thank you. Um, and it's it's funny tongue-in-cheek very much um listen to it enjoy it um to me it's obvious like they're 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 they're, they're playing on the whole um like gay thing and i think it's kind of fun that the, the way they do it and yeah yeah it's cute i love it, it. i like, love it like in the live action uh beauty and the beast they played more of lefou's uh gayness yeah. Than than the original animated one, so. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, it's fun. Um, it, it's interesting. I'm not. Um. I I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I hope you do too. So Jason Michael Snow, I think, is the um. 
uh, LeFou and then Nick Adams is playing the beat the Gaston character and it's it's yeah. Fun, fun, funny, fun, fun. Gary. Yeah. Sorry, I started watching it. I got <laughs> I was yeah. like it's, I was it's, like, what it's the heck? good. Yeah, it's good. Well, in classic gay karaoke fashion, apparently, there's like this minute prelude or whatever lead in and i'm like all right all right i get it your best friend you're gonna sing with him can we get to the singing like (laughs) anyways theater people wow hey now (laughs) so always gotta have a fucking spotlight anyways well well, it is kind of more like stand-up comedy yeah. You always have some sort of prelude before they get into the good jokes. Um, so my pick this uh, for the month of April, which shouldn't really quite be a surprise because of, like there's only two things that I seem to promote a lot of. Um, and in this <laughs> case, it's uh, on Disney Plus and it's the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, it just wrapped uh, over a week ago with a six episode arc for the first season. And I say the first season because there is a lot of discussion that people would like to see this continue into a season two um so uh the final episode wow like a lot happens Mm. in like an hour and two minutes or i think is the runtime on it um all of the episodes are about an hour long but uh and then just this friday on the 30th they released on disney plus avengers assembled episode two which is about the making of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, where episode one was about WandaVision. So now I figured out what they're doing because I was a little disappointed that Assemble didn't go further. Mm-hmm. Like for WandaVision, I was like, oh, just like one episode? Like, because I was used <laughs> to the gallery for Star Wars with The Mandalorian where it was like multiple episodes and there was all this like great insight into the making and the thought process and all it. So this isn't quite as in depth. But, anyways, um, they did do one about assembled, and they talked about like and uh, Carrie, the I think it's Carrie or Carrie, the female director, like talked a lot about stuff. But what I really loved about the assemble episode is they talked about COVID and how that affected things, and how they had to shut stuff down and then kind of resume, and mm-hmm. the challenges of that. Um, they didn't address the theories that are floating around online about how like there was a whole subplot in the story that was removed, which made things awkward. Mm-hmm. Um, and some things are just never explained and dealt with. But regardless, the whole series is really good. Um, they, in the series, take on uh, some specific topics that need to be you know, discussed and brought into light. What is more mm-hmm. interesting is the fact that it was filmed and came out this year after last year's black lives matter Mm -hmm. like momentum and other things because it was meant to be like what we see is the overarching themes Mm -hmm. were already kind of planned and then world events happened um yeah so yeah i uh i really appreciate it and at the end of the sixth episode right well towards the end Sam Wilson as the Falcon has an entire moment where he just kind of lays it out oh, about yeah. politics and um, how political action affects the people that they represent and it affects like communities in the world and um, you know how you need to recognize that you are not that far removed from the people that you are directly affecting through your decisions and your laws and your actions Mm -hmm. Um, what's intriguing in the assembled as as a behind the scenes is that that whole monologue basically was worked out and rehearsed between spellman the writer and um anthony mackey they like went Mm -hmm. back and forth and discussed again and again and again and worked it so that it felt authentic to anthony mackie um like he was really feeling it and living it in the moment which is how it comes across on screen it's yeah and amazing i was like 
Whoa. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. We're going mm-hmm. there. We're saying these things. The writer was doing... like, hey, I'm not in your position. I need you to tell me about this, and we're going to scrub this out until you are satisfied. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, Spellman like, had the idea, and Anthony mm-hmm. Mackie was agreeing with it, but the it's the it's the choice of the wording and the nuance of how it's delivered is pretty wild like um instead of being a a broad like you know i'm going to stand here as this character and make these statements it was Mm -hmm. much more humanistic and authentic in the moment um Mm -hmm. and i and i feel like uh, people are trying to wrap their brains around this stuff because like you know what happens in what is it episode four like that dramatic moment at the end of the episode people were like this is disney like disney <laughs> did that like what like well this is and, uh, this is marvel they're owned by disney but it's marvel right i i on, I, I like to make disney these plus. distinctions so yeah it's on disney plus but it, it but is disney still the marvel side criticized but Jeff Disney has been criticized for decades about cleaning up things like yeah. all of these classic fairy tale stories. And yet the darker side is never really revealed or discussed. Mm-hmm. Like the reality of how lions actually operate in the Savannah. Like, I mean, just, you know, like different intriguing things that have been critiqued over the years. So I find, I think that people are, who are watch Disney uh, from a certain viewpoint are intrigued by the fact that like, they're taking on racism and they're taking on like brutality. And in that one specific episode, like someone is outright murdered on screen. They just cut it in a certain way that they don't show it, but they don't shy away from like that, like the, what happens and the fact that there's a whole like audience that watches this happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I was like, I mean, I was absolutely shocked watching it i wasn't grossed out but i was really confused because i was like what just happened Mm -hmm. like yeah 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 okay so at the end of mandalorian season two like this you know big secret cameo thing happens and that was supposed to be a big deal i'm sorry what happened in that episode of (laughs) talking to the winter soldier was far more shocking to me like Mm -hmm. i was like what i was Uh like oh that's when these days i'll catch up on these (laughs) So, I, yeah, it's, I'm um, personally uh, impervious to spoilers, so. Uh, but just, by, so not it, everybody. Yeah, so I found it really um, intriguing, and I really appreciated it, and the fact that people are kind of talking about like what the the next you know uh, steps will be, and if if they'll continue into a second season or not. Um, and there is a star cameo in episode five. It is not as huge as they kind of hyped it to be in a weird way like this is the this is the thing that i know they don't pay attention to us but it's like disney y'all need to be careful about this because like paul bettany royally screwed y'all over with wandavision because he hyped up this whole thing about this surprise actor that he's always wanted to work with and then when it gets revealed who it is everybody was like what the hell is that (laughs) like come on (laughs) right and then in this season you know, some of the cast is talking about that there is a, an actor, you know, that's a surprise in episode five. And I think they learned their lesson and they tempered it a little bit. Even I have to admit, this character comes on screen. I don't I don't know much about Marvel, so I have no idea who this person is. Mm-hmm. But that actor, mm-hmm. I was like, get the F out of here. I was like, now they're in the Marvel universe? Like, mm-hmm. cracked me up to no end. Because now all these people are making these weird <laughs> crossovers i'm not gonna give it away if you haven't seen it but there's a a very well established sitcom universe that this actor actor comes from which is now a marvel so people are trying to mash them together they're trying to make nice. that happen and i was like i don't know about that but anyways mm. so i suggest if like if you can um to go and to, to check it out and disney plus isn't um all that costly yeah. Uh, if you want to get just Disney Plus, yeah. yeah. So, it's a little but more that's expensive to, to get the bundle. Uh, but that's all right. I guess my folks, I think that's the end. Oh, 
Well, anyways, contact us, pop over to our website, CubsOutloud.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutloud at gmail.com if you have a topic you would like to discuss. That's uh, the best place to do that. Uh, you can leave us a voicemail at 361 Talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Join our entourage chat at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Or subscribe to our Google Calendar to find out when we're planning on recording these at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Get, get various uh, uh, col accoutrements uh, by going to Zazzle at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud, or, you know, whatever your localization is. We've got Consent is a four-play shirts. You've got uh, our logo shirts for all three generations. Um, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud, or send us a little cash at people.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can subscribe to us on basically every single uh, podcasting platform. You know, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon Audible, etc. Uh, Spotify. Um, you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Set, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box Something or Other, or Windgem, W Y N D G E M, on Twitch, where currently I've been streaming a lot of Final Fantasy fourteen, And eventually we'll get back to Bears and Dragons. I just. I actually need to work on that. <laughs> But <laughs> there's there there's a thing this next episode that I need to make sure it's all ready and uh-huh. I've been procrastinating. You Did, procrastinating? No, Damon. <laughs> if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cup Seven Nine on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to find me online, you can pretty much get a hold of me anywhere as Gabriel73. Uh, when it comes to Twitter and most things that are like very adult oriented, just put three X's at the end. Gabriel73 XXX. XXX. And with that, say good afternoon, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Ciao for now. <laughs> <laughs>